on this episode of the Third Gallon Podcast. Listen, kids, you're never going to remember what you learned in school, but you will remember Trenchfoot. The outlaws are finally in Kosawana's workshop. Uh, you were investigating the warehouse owned by one Olaman Kosawana. You dealt with his clockwork linebacker. Uh, Jeez. Eleanor got the kill on it. Uh, and you uh, picked up some clues. Uh, you discovered a very important peepus room. Uh, with an emergency sandwich in the toilet. I just realized I never actually looked inside the toilet. No, you just lift up the, the back part. Oh, dang it. It's where you find your level one You'll pistol. You'll never know what's in that toilet. It has sword still in this place. And uncovering clues left behind from the break-in. Uh, you figure out there has been some like medium uh, humanoid-sized footprints, uh, three of them to be specific, and one small-sized humanoid. With bare fucking feet. Uh, that have tracked through here somewhat recently. I'll hear this get pointed out and be like, Muglin. But it looks like they aren't alone. There's a little orb that had a little glowing red light in its eye. Uh, Chester recognized it as a clockwork spy. Yeah. Looking on you guys and recording you. Guys, it's recording us. Time to take care of the snitch. Psycure hits 10th level. They immediately start renting themselves out as a participant <laughs> in cult activities. Now. Hey guys, uh, Derek here. I just wanted to jump in before this episode to share a special announcement with you all. Uh, on Thursday, February 16th, 2023, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be going on Hans Half Elven's Twitch channel and teaching Hans, uh, Murray from Albert Inn, and Comic from Fiendtales Comic how to play Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Uh, we're going to be making characters and play the Pathfinder 2e Beginner Box. Uh, I'll be DMing it, and Drow will be there playing as well. Uh, if you want to check that out, I'll link Hans's Twitch channel in the description of this episode, and we'll also post about it on our social media pages. Again, that is this Thursday, February 16th, 2023, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Hans's Twitch channel, Hans Half Elven, and that's Hans with a Z. Uh, come check it out if you can. Or check his channel for a VOD afterwards. I'm super excited to uh, indoctrinate more people uh, with my love for all things Paizo and Pathfinder. And I'm really looking forward to running the beginner box in 2E. Uh, but anyway, with that out of the way, please enjoy Season 3, Episode 35, The Clockwork Snitch. I have a hot take about death. Not that we would know anything about character death. No, uh, not mm -hmm. like I've just recently been traumatized by it or Live anything forever. like that. Uh Maybe death really doesn't matter or shouldn't matter past certain levels in specifically D20 epic fantasy role-playing games like, oh, I don't know, Pathfinder in Dungeons and Dragons. Pathfinder 5th edition. Uh, so specifically, you say D20 games, but like D&D &D and Pathfinder specifically. No, they the, should the, the, the big much. The big names within yeah. the D20. I think when I say D20 fantasy. epic hero fantasy, that basically carves out for the most part, Pathfinder D and D in games very much like Pathfinder and D and D. Yeah, because when you get to those higher levels, you're more than just a hero at that point. You're like a legend. You're like a right. little demigod. Like if yeah. I remember, what what about what level does Outlaws of Alcastar end at? Ten. A ten. I think you get to ten right near the end of it. And two E specifically, uh, Rezer Raise Dead is a level six spell. Uh, the spell raise dead, I believe. I'll double check. And on level minutes. six is 11th level, right? Uh, it's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I'll tell you real Solid. quick. Yeah, raise dead, six level spell. So like. And you'll get six level spells if you were like a cleric at 11th. level 11. Yeah. So like. 10, 8, 9, 10, at that point, you're kind of like hero status. You're oh, yeah. known for being strong. But when you get up to around, what, 15, you're starting to get into the realm of legends. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. So, you know, that makes sense. At that level, death don't mean much. It either take your character's choice or Phrasma herself to keep you from coming back. AKA Not even Phrasma herself. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just or feel it. dying to a shadow. <laughs> it's well, because... <laughs> It's not we just like we weren't that high of a level then. No, no, we weren't. It's not just because like you have the mechanical ability to do it more easily. It's also just like uh replacing a party member past like level 10. Oh, it's yeah. really really hard to shoe into a story you're working on. That's fair. That's fair. And you you're right. That could be pretty difficult to do. I liked it because we ha- we've had this discussion, actually. I'm about to make the same uh, statement that I did then, is that I really liked how the GCP did it for a little bit of their things. One of them lost a character, and they brought in a character whose background was, he's a hero. Yeah, A totally. well-known hero. But I feel like you can only pull that off in one campaign yeah. so many times. Yeah. Um, really only once. Um uh, I think that we kind of just got really lucky with Alonzo's death. Uh, How is that lucky? No disrespect, Kat. <laughs> it's more just like... I mean, it was Alonzo. It was... Hey. At, when I say lucky, I mean, I it was... Just joking. It was low fun. enough level to where it, when it happened... That's we could... <laughs> we could feasibly bring in a character. I get it. I get it. No, no. I'm good. Uh-huh. Just feeling a little salty tonight. No, but like you could reasonably bring in a character like Eleanor. Like if um if Alonzo had died at like ninth level towards yeah. the end of oh, book boy. three, bringing in like Eleanor as a backup character would be like Alonzo. You were married to this superhero for it's all like, this time. Why didn't you bring her on? Yeah, oh, that's fair. That's why did we have you? <laughs> right. Um. And uh, not only that, but like specifically with a show, we got lucky with Alonzo's death, not just for like the replacement side of things, but also like he died at the end of a book at the boss fight. So basically yeah. all the next episode was a little bit of questioning Shoma and then uh, dealing with Alonzo. So a lot of times when character death happens, like in our games, but also in like other actual plays, you're in the middle of a dungeon. Yeah. And like no one has resurrection stuff on them. And so it's just like this big hassle. Yeah. And so. How convenient. So I will say that makes it a lot more fun when adventure paths actually have a way to have you throw in someone new. Yes. For example, yes. in Reign of Winter, not that hard. Because you could always just, I mean, it's a bit, you could say it's a bit cheap, but you could always pull out the Baba Yaga did something card. Yeah, and also. It's all about Baba Yaga. To be fair, Reign of Winter is so off the rails bonkers. Yeah. That like, it's really the whole suspension of disbelief is at a different like level compared it's to a delightful. lot of adventure paths. And you know, what other, of adventure paths. you know what other adventure path gives us access to people like that? Mm. Outlaws of Alkenstar. You are kind of right. If you want, look at the background of Saikir. Saikir is disgraced from the temple. Who's the highest level person in the temple? The high cock mother. At level 15. The cock mummy. Yes. So <laughs> Shut the fuck that up. means a level 10 person being at the temple, not that far of a stretch if there's someone there who's level 15. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then once again, I mean, I'm sure technically speaking, if we rehash that background, it'd, it'd be rehashing a background, but that's a thing. Do you happen to have any stat blocks for people from the academy? I don't know if there's any of them in the Impossible Lands. Uh, I don't think there's anything, uh, not that I've seen yet. I don't remember seeing that in the Impossible Lands. Man's book. I know there's that one e book that has a actual like one e stat block of Alkenstar, um, and that'll have like notable NPCs of different levels. And I don't remember if there was anyone there from the academy or not. I don't think it'd be too far of a stretch to claim that though. Like no. I mean, if there's someone that powerful at the temple, the academy is another very important institution in Alkenstar. Heck, you could have someone around that level from the Gunworks too. Yeah, uh, it's uh, because of the the a high amount of detail for the place that we happen to have our adventure in. It actually wouldn't be impossible to find someone our level in it, yeah. which is kind of a cool fault to have. But I mean, the thing that's nice is that the system kind of plays off that assumption that like, all right, you've hit level 10 now. As long as you aren't completely stupid, uh, at least this is the way it worked in 1E and it appears to work somewhat similarly in 2E. It's like once you've hit like the level 10 area, as long as you're not totally stupid and you have some money. Or die to the wrong thing. Yeah, and you don't, don't and don't die to the wrong thing. You Which does just, not exist, at least that same with a, way. High enough, in, with a high enough spell level, it doesn't exist. Yeah. 
<laughs> Shadows don't do the same thing anymore. <laughs> well, that's true. But I was about to say it like, uh, because another example of that is what your guys in our homebrew adventure was about level 12. Yeah. If one of you happened to have died to the bo boss in uh, the pre-made content we did, you could not have been brought back until you got to like an 18th level spellcaster. Ooh. Because you would have been dissolved. And that would just be an example of dying to the wrong thing. So that would need true resurrection then. Yes. And one e, yeah. You would be, or wish. I was going to uh, say, or equipped. wish. So, is it fully dissolved or is it like disintegrate? You were, if I remember, because I just looked this up because you asked me a question uh -huh. about that module. Yeah. Um, if you died to it, you would dissolve and all that would be left would be your, I believe it was eyeballs and nerves. Well, that's enough. Uh, I, I don't know. It specifically mentions in that little stat block, only these three things can bring you back. How I don't fun. know. Nerves seem like flesh. <laughs> uh-huh. If it calls it out in the stat block, then it, yeah, sucks to suck. So, like, yeah, if you're smart, you can always come back unless you get unlucky. Yeah. Yeah. Or you die at an early level. Yep. But even that, then... That being said, if you really want to kill somebody... Can I introduce you to the deck of many things? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to file that under, you should not have this in your game. Advice to all newer GMs out there fascinated by the deck of many things. Do not, I repeat, do not bring it into your game under any circumstances unless you are done with the campaign. Yeah. Just know. And yeah. ready for things to just go crazy. Don't this bring is it the, in. This is the... We've been playing Minecraft for a few months. I like my base. What if there was a bunch of TNT under it? Yeah, really. Because things could either go funny or good or horribly wrong. Uh, and you have no idea what will happen. If you're a Pathfinder 1E DM specifically, and you want to have a little bit of wacky fun times, but don't want the, you know, capital R responsibility of Deck of Many Things, look up the Rod of Wonder. That's mm -hmm. a good one. Yeah. It's a great item. Or as we lovingly call it here, the Wabajack. Wabajack. Yeah. It's a good item. I wonder if they're going to add that into 2E, because I love the... No, they did. That's right. I looked it up. They did add the Rod <laughs> of Wonder into 2E. I remember looking at That's this. That's right. It's in the core rulebook. We just yeah. never happened upon it. It is a rare tagged item. Um, oh, I love this thing so much. Uh, it's, it's basically... Uh, you roll a D100 whenever you use it to action activate and something wacky happens. <laughs> it's great. Something wacky. I love this thing. Uh, once activated, the rod can't be activated for another 1D4 hours, which is probably better because in the 1E thing, it just has like a certain amount of charges, I think. Um, and I think you guys cycled through being turned to size category small, turning yourself blue. Or something. It was wonderful. It's wild. I love that thing. But no, yeah. On the on the note of death, it's just like uh, I feel like it's one thing to say, uh, not preferring to have DM fiat gods intervening <laughs> thing, uh, is not the same as being like, well, once you get to tenth level, you just have the resources to kind of counteract death. I think that's different entirely. And it helps offset how, especially in Pathfinder, with how scaling works, where you are just like a legendary figure as the further you go in and so it's really hard to narratively introduce someone that's just happens to be the right power level you know but yeah cool i will say 2e does make it at least difficult to get that because raise dead is what six level and you get negatives added onto that like a week long of irreversible conditions mm -hmm. uh they make it so that you can't you can't prepare to die and just Spell, spell, just, you're yeah, back to normal. Do it willingly, because that's what we've come started to do in our one It's less like that's just something normal, but it is an option. Yeah, but if you want to try to avoid some of that at higher levels, they even have the ritual for it. But to do the ritual, you need like eight to 16 people. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so that's raised dead is oh. the spell, but if and you can heighten it um, to bring people back at higher levels. But, like, it always has the limitation of past three days. If you want to bring someone back from, like, a long time ago, like, decades or longer, you need the resurrect ritual, um, which isn't a very high-level ritual. But as you heighten it, it gets more and more intense. I think the topped-out 10th-level version of it, you need 16 additional casters yeah. to bring someone up to 20th-level back 
Oh, um, man. And it's super expensive. Which in that case is really fun because one of the selling points for me in first edition, and I think is you could say the same in second edition, is that if an enemy humanoid could do it, you could also do it. Theoretically, if they cast a spell, you if you make the right kind of character, you could cast that spell. So why in the world do you sometimes have adventures where you have an entire cult standing in a circle trying to bring back someone to life, bring back a dead person to life, where you at an equivalent level could just be like magic. Bam. So the ritual is said up yeah <laughs> so the ritual is exactly that that's why you need a cult of 16 people to bring back a, di- a lich or a uh, 20th level well it's not just 16 people 16 people who are at least half the level of the person you're bringing back so, well, so yeah. there you go 20th yeah. level back that's yeah. like 16 10th level people. oh there you go yeah. so it makes it even more difficult but like that's it's fun because it also adds flavor to hey your next cult resurrections you know <laughs> uh, this week on Cult and Resurrections. They're like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just, you know, creating a bunch of 10th level characters to bring me back one day. <laughs> no, 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 no big deal. Psycure hits 10th level. They immediately start renting themselves out as a participant in, in cult activities. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just saying, <laughs> having a party of 15th level adventurers going to stop a cult from resurrecting some all powerful being at 20th level. That actually sounds like a really cool idea. And you, you have to end up finding a whole bunch of 10th level casters to stop the ritual. Yeah. That could be a lot of fun. It's like, yeah. here, what are you doing? Raising the dead? What's the one thing I asked you not to do? Raise the dead. Scratch the wallpaper. <laughs> Pee on the carpet. What's, uh, the, what's the other thing I asked you not to do? <laughs> Don't bite the yard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you get out of here, Zach here. <laughs> get out of here. Uh. But uh, that's, that's, that's a lot of, I like what they've done with a lot of the rituals where they take some of your kind of overpowered spells from 1E e and made them more difficult, but more available to everyone. Well, a lot of spells in one E were effectively rituals anyway. Like yeah. they take a long time to cast. Like uh, reincarnate would take like an hour to cast anyway in one E. But it yeah. was a spell slot for you if you're like a druid, right? Yep. Um, but now it's a ritual, which makes more sense, yeah. honestly. So that's, that's the, pretty neat. Yeah. All right. I remember being Yura, always preparing reincarnate. Just in case. Just in case. Just in case. Uh, Well, no one else is going to die in this game, right? Ha ha. Please, no. Centuries (laughs) before the Star Stone was raised, (laughs) the Wizard Kings Nex and Geb warred with one another, scarring the land between them into a devastated, unstable magic wasteland. From the glowing ashes of the Mana Wastes arose Alkenstar, the city of smog, a metropolis of airships, skyscrapers, <laughs> factories, and clockwork wonders. Wonders! To the world, Alkenstar is the pinnacle of innovation and determination in the face of insurmountable odds. On its streets, odds. life in Alkenstar is a non-stop <laughs> race to end the competition. And it is here that here. a desperate group, hungry for desperate. revenge... Hungry. Living on the edge of the law, Living. hunts for the hunts. ones who cast them out. Cast. They, they are the outlaws of Alkenstar. Oh, good yeah. Shot. Yeah. You, Sorry. Oh, man. I can't tell you how hard it is to both <laughs> try to do that from memory and also not get thrown off. That's why I have to keep looking back at it this time because you keep trying to throw me off the fucking rails. Am I the only one who's not constantly trying to ruin it? Yes. Well, you ruined yeah. me in uh, season two once. <gasps> in, uh, in 500 years. years. The problem is I don't think I'll ever be able to top that, so You're I'm just about to have to right. stop. You you won the game. Trenchfoot. Monkey. Stop making me laugh at Trenchfoot. Trenchfoot. <laughs> That's not the point of <laughs> Trenchfoot. <laughs> Trenchfoot. The, you know, Mitochondria. If Trenchfoot Powerhouse were, of the foot. were to happen to anyone, it'd be a group of people from Alkenstar fighting in the trenches. I don't know if this is going to get left in or not, but Jacob has this weird thing where he it's brings up Trenchfoot. It's my fault it's been applicable so many times in the last few weeks. Trenchfoot? Yes. It's people standing in water. Trenchachondria. It's like one of the, uh, house of the three foot. things Jacob remembers from school, supposedly. It, uh, it's two things, thank you. And you're we right. We just did this in the last episode. Please yeah, they can we cut move it on? Out. All right. If they didn't cut out that time, they better hope they cut out this time. Or else will be happening twice. Listen. 
kids, you're never going to remember what you learned in school. But you will remember Trenchfoot. When we last left, our band of outlaws, you know, I've kind of refrained from calling you Micah's angels. <gasps> Why? Why? Because one of y'all's angels died. And? We, we have a new us. angel. Yeah, but who, whose angel is this? Micah's angel. This is mine. This is Micah's angel still. It's the group name. Doesn't matter who's part of the we group. We got two Micah's angels, but then we got one Alonzo's angel. Yes. Uh, except different. The angels. <laughs> the angels. Here we go, angels. What do they mean? The mighty, mighty angels. Is that uh, Cincinnati? I don't know. I don't pay attention to sports ball that much. I think much. it's just like basic. Yeah, sports basic ball chant. sports ball chant. Sports Quiet. ball Quiet. angels. But anyway, when we last left you guys, uh, you were investigating the warehouse owned by one Olaman Kosawana. You dealt with it's his Los Angeles. You worked. You dealt with his clockwork linebacker. Uh, Jeez. Eleanor got the kill on it. Uh, yes. Chester was grievously wounded. I kept my cool. Chester took four damage from that weak linebacker. Uh, and you uh, picked up some clues. Uh, you discovered a very important peepus room uh, with an emergency sandwich in the toilet. I just realized I never actually looked inside the toilet. No, you just lift up the, the back part. Oh, dang it. It's where you find your level one pistol. You'll never know what's in that toilet. It has sword still in this place. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you also found some clues, like uh, blood spatters on the floor in front of the trap. Uh, you saw some bullet holes uh, that had been fired by whatever, by the gang that had entered here. We could tell that somebody had fixed that automaton. Yeah, and that it was not functioning 100%. A clockwork machine. Uh, you got some interesting items, and then you moved on to this main warehouse room. Um, and we're looking through stuff in there. Uh, there's a bunch of clocks all fixed at the same time, which is weird. Uh, you notice that the place had kind of been rummaged through. It was messy. Uh, there was a bunch of clockwork, like handlers, machines, bodies, parts, uh, not all completely built. Uh, some still with like winding keys in them. A lot of them didn't have like the heads assembled on top of them. Uh, and when we left off, you had noticed one odd clockwork device that was functioning it was a little orb uh, that had a little glowing red light in its eye. Uh, you, and Chester recognized it as a clockwork spy yeah. looking on you guys and recording you with a, uh, I think, critical success on a recall knowledge. Oh. Um, guys, it's recording us! And when we left you guys, it had popped out its little clockwork wings <laughs> and was start, it was just about to start to fly away. And that's where we're going to pick up with are you guys. Are we going to roll initiative? I want to shoot this thing. We are going to roll some initiative. And I remember you distinctly saying that it had been less than 10 minutes since our last fight. It in, ha in fact has been less than 10 minutes since our last fight. Good. Good. Oh, yeah. Acceptable. Thank you, no new die. So this thing's going to try and run. All right. What you'll get for initiative, Chester? Chester, with his improved perception from his still going Drakenheart Heart Mutagen, got a 26. Wow. Yeah. All right. Eleanor, what did you get for initiative? Oh, I tied with Chester for a 26 on nice. an 88. Oh, who go first? I have a perception of plus eight. I highly doubt that Chester doesn't beat me. I have me. a perception of plus 11 right now. Yeah, Chester goes first. Uh, Psych here? <laughs> 11. <laughs> All right. I rolled a four. Oh. I mean, it, cru <laughs> it crushes my soul just a little bit to have rolled that 18 for initiative. You're a cat. You should, by nature, get Holy some kind crap. of bonus for this. I'm also made, like, half of metal. Oh, you stop that. I did so good. I, I was not me. It was the machine. Ugh, I did. I rolled a natural 20 on initiative. I did so good, did too. So good. Can you stop? I'm going to spend a bottle cap to make you re-roll that. That's not how bottle... Wait. <laughs> No, bottle no, caps work like hero how. points. That's not how they work this time around. Hot dog. Bark. Uh, I got some day. artwork of this guy. Cause I'm not sure where what book this comes from, but this is in the foundry module. I'm going to show it to you. Get a look at this guy. Oh. oh. That's cool. He looks like one of the spheres in Portal. Yeah, he do. Oh? Yeah, he do. Oh, he's going to get away. But he's got like <sighs> mechanical spider legs and wings. He looks cool. And he got a little antenna. He's so cute. I don't want I don't to destroy know if I'd it. Say cute. He's like a special edition Wheatley or Space Corps 
or gold edition thing with went spider legs. I don't like his legs. The rest of it's adorable. I don't like his legs. All yeah, right. if you just if you hold up your hand like this, it, it looks like you could just have him like in your hand. You'd throw him I up into the air. He'd start going. I can't see the screen anymore. Well. That sounds like a personal I problem. I like him. And yeah, I please, like him. Uh, in this fight in the first round, sir, as your guy runs away. Uh, well, I'm going <sighs> to say one doesn't. thing here. Uh, I was debating thinking back because uh, technically you were rolling perception against its stealth. Uh-huh. But I, And that should have been initiative. That should have been. I did but, beat it. But I didn't you roll stealth for, for it. I just used its stealth DC, which is 10 plus its stealth score. So theoretically, it's not initiative because it would have been it could have been higher. However, I will compensate Ooh. by having it take an action to get up effectively from prone, okay. and then it will start spending an action to. And of course, it can it can fly. Wait, is that two? Where movements? the fuck is it going? Away. I think it's going to double move to try and get away. Is it in like? A second floor to the workshop? So, like, the yes, workshop has the, like, inset, like, the stone part of it, and then there's these wooden okay. ramps that go up to this, like, platform, uh, and there's a door to the outside on the platform. Now, that's its full turn. How does this one work? Nope, that's not it. That's going to be its turn, so next in the order is Chester Williams. What you want to do? All right. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out how I can... um. <sighs> Dang it, it's just a little too... Uh, wait, wait, can I just... Can I move like that? Uh, if you want to do that, um, I'm going to need a climb check because... Could that be one action, though? Uh, let me double check. Because if I can't do it in one action, I just simply cannot catch up to it. Uh, yeah, so I didn't reread the flavor at the beginning of this. I might ah. do that after the, this little combat. But uh, it's three feet lower than the wooden platform. So uh, that's about yay high. Uh, I'll let you roll a uh, climb or acrobatics. Cool. Then what Chester is going to do is Chester is going to devise a stratagem. Okay. Shock of all shocks. Okay. Okay. All right. All yeah, right. Okay. This all is right, pretty all good. Right, all right. All right. That's uh, and then Chester is going to run up and jump onto the ramp. Uh, I will do another. Uh, Knowledge. Knowledge, just in case I crit it. And I well, you get... don't don't roll, because you already crit it on All right, then I, get a, then I and everybody else get a plus one on attack or attack-related things on it. Yeah. So everybody? Um, it's the same yes. as Solid. other clockwork things. Weakness, electricity, and or <laughs> But this one is low enough level mechanically where it doesn't have a physical resistance. Okay. Oh. Uh-huh. And then Chester's going to... You want me to do a climb or an athletics check? Acrobatics check? Yeah. Acrobatics check is nice. Because it's it's low enough that you could vault it, basically. Uh, 21. 21? Yep, 13 plus 8 to get up there. Three feet? That should be able to do it. I would hope so. 21? Yeah. That'll do it. All right. And then Chester, so Chester moves. Let me grab Chester this time. As he runs northeast, hopping up on top of the platform. And... Oh, I got it. Move there did move there, but I moved <laughs> diagonally, so it's fine. <laughs> Third action, Chester will, with his devise a stratagem, um, do a grapple check on this thing. Okay. Ooh. And with an 18 on the die, plus 10, will be a 28 grapple. 28 grapple? Yes. And that's against my fortitude DC, I believe. I think so. You stood in the only place I could have gotten to, Jacob. Lamel. This is the only place I could have gotten to as well. Sorry. Uh, attempt an athletics check against the target's 42 DC. Yes. So, yes. What was your total? 28. No, 29 because of that plus one. That's a critical success. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> I am restrained until the end of your next turn. Unless I escape or you move. Hot. Diggity dog. dog. Click on restrained here. Oh, oh look. I'm also flat footed and immobilized. Would you look at that? <laughs> Rip its wings off. Uh, well, that is the end of my turn. Oh. 
Yeah, one action move, one action device, a stratagem, and one action grapple. Yeah, boy. All right, Eleanor, it is now your turn. Can it still be attacked while it's grappled? 100%. All righty then. I'm going to take Eleanor, and by the way, as a swashbuckler, Eleanor has exceptionally high speed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and took my one spot. Well, Could have been in. What's your speed? 35. Is it oh. on Chester Square? No, no it's where adjacent it is. To him. Okay. You could just move again. I know, and I'm angry at you because I have to move twice. Yeah. Well, move again, and I'm going to stab at it. All right, go for it. Do you want to it. get caddy corner to him? Uh, it's already, f- oh, it doesn't flat foot, it doesn't matter to you, but yeah. If it and escapes is the thing. Yeah, let me, let me get around since I'm already using a second movement speed. I got gotcha. you. Do you want to try and tumble through for some panache zoney? Um, but if I tumble through, that's an action, isn't it? But you can, you can do mo- it. It's part of a move action. You can do it. Oh, move. then I'll attempt that tumble through. Sure. I thought it was an action. It is an action, but you move as doing it while you're doing it. It probably isn't going to happen with a natty two for a fifteen. Uh, it's not- restrained though. Yeah, but unfortunately, because it's so small, its reflex is pretty yeah. high. Ah. So it doesn't do it, but like... Well, I don't get panache, don't... but I can still attack it. Yar. All right, well, I'm going to attack. Okay, that is... And you said I get a plus one, Jacob? Yes. That is a 23 to hit. Jeez. Ooh. That's almost a critical right now. Uh, that'll hit. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm roll so your sad damage. It wasn't a critical. Uh, the damage is going to be six damage. Six damage. Uh, you mess it up pretty good. It does not die, but it is very damaged. Hey, I have a question. I caught the golden snitch. How many points does Ravenclaw get? Uh, Raven would totally. He's a smart he boy. He would totally be Ravenclaw. I don't even read you Harry Potter, this, and I would you, know that. You, ta- you, you, you caught the golden snitch. Ten points to Gryffindor. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's exactly how. That is more said. accurate. That is more accurate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good turn, Eleanor. You stab the golden snitch. Uh, you've almost killed it, if I'm being <sighs> honest. Uh, Psykir, it's your turn. Psykir, yell at us. It's okay if you hit me. I, on the other hand. <laughs> I've given per- I, uh, as I, re- I, I, I wish to give permission consent? word. I consent to getting shouted at. <laughs> So how does that wand of widening work? Uh, you spend an extra action. It adds an action to whatever you use, and then it makes your area wider. Your your so yeah, your cone your... reach further. Your area of effect bigger. Okay, so I can't use it because I would have to move. Yeah. Yeah. Do I think harm would work on these guys, or is it only for a creature? Chester got a good knowledge check. He could shout this type of stuff I feel like we've had this conversation before, We've fought so many automatons or clockwork machines. These aren't technically automatons, I suppose. It's just a fun word to say. Uh, You're asking if you could use harm on it? Yeah. Uh, You fought a lot of these. That's a necromancy effect, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's immune to that. Uh, Okay, so hang on. (laughs) It's like, here, just pull out your gun. Don't you have a crossbow? I have a crossbow, yeah. Does Psykir not have a gun? It is flat No, didn't you take Alonzo's gun? I didn't actually end up adding it to my thing. You uh, should have. It's mounted on the wall. I have a flintlock <laughs> pistol okay. too, but so I don't know if it would have been his. Yes, I will shoot. All right. Uh, go ahead and <laughs> make me an attack roll. Holds it up. Puts it on his head like an apple. <laughs> <laughs> make me an attack this roll. This is Psykir. the third time I've ever used one. <laughs> uh... So would this be my first attack bonus? Yes. Okay, solid. Cocked. <laughs> Fix it. Uh, 20. Dirty 20. 20. Yeah. Yeah, that'll hit. This thing is a uh, creature minus one. Okay, oh, oh, oh. solid. And it's also restrained, so its AC and is not is great. A D8. Seven. Ooh. Seven. Nice. Uh, yeah, seven. Chester holds up the golden snitch and you run a crossbow bolt right through it and you kill it. Yes! Good job. Get dunked on spy machine. Do you like spike it? <laughs> Bam! <laughs> <laughs> Throws it down. Touchdown. All y'all take a hero point for that. Yay! For real? Yeah, good, good coordination. 
Okay, guys, we have one. Next episode is divisible by four. Yeah, we, we got to use, use like. This why do you point. think I used my hero point to re-roll that roll? I don't know. Because we were coming close to the episode where we would get rid of them anyway. Add to I did that on purpose. One. I had bottle caps to save myself. Bark. There we go. All right, we've got to roll and do something with these rolls. <laughs> <laughs> now, a hero point, do you have to spend that beforehand or do you roll, not reveal the result, use it, and then roll again? You roll, but you don't hear it, whether it... Yeah, you don't reveal okay, the cool. result. Yeah, that's why I was using mine on that one I rolled. It was a natural one, so yeah. I didn't need to reveal the result. Yeah. 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 But it, it still, according to the rules, I used it properly. So now that you've gone up on this wooden platform, I actually have some separate flavor text for you. Oh. Uh, several sloping ramps lead to a six-foot-high wooden loading platform that spans half the workspace. Six ten-foot-wide bay doors lie in the west wall, uh, and the platform is covered in hundreds of old scuff marks from wooden and metal wagon wheels. So I may have messed up a little bit in letting you guys just kind of vault over here. Well, I still did like a 21 check. It was yeah, still it's a pretty fine. good roll. I'm not going to not gonna begrudge you for it. Plus, there's like ramps and there was things to like get up there on it. Yeah. Um, but what you can tell from this area with all the like tracks and everything and these ramps heading down into that kind of sunken floor workshop area, that this may be some sort of like loading area for like uh, sending things out or getting supplies in um, to the workshop. Okay, now though you see there's six doors to our so west, right? Yes. <laughs> um, and those doors are presumably open to the outside. Yes. Okay. Do we? What is with those stairs right there directly to our west? There's a staircase in front of those doors. Yeah. Is that going up or down? Uh, if you look at it there, basically this... Um, actually, I think I got the platform thing mostly right. Basically, this uh, wooden platform structure... Uh, if you open up this door, that stair leads down to a door to the outside. The whole platform you are compared to the ground outside is raised, uh -huh. like to the height of a wagon bed. Okay, so that's probably so that's leading down to an exit door for people. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, this is like a UPS center. Yeah. Can we tell where that little orb was trying to fly to? It looks like, I mean, so it went up here. It looks like it was just trying to get out. Okay. That's is there like a window? Uh, there's some busted windows around here, yeah, and okay, you could probably yeah. find a, an open spot in the uh, warehouse roof. Uh, if you had let it get away another round, it would have gotten out of arm's reach. Yeah. Oh man! Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Chester will grab the little spy orb and he'll shove it in the bag with the intent of trying to get something out of it later. Yeah. Um, you also see two small clocks near the northernmost door in this section. Are they also stuck at 20207? They are. <coughs> hey, hey, uh, sack here. In bright. Okay, yes, it is bright. In bright, like the goddess is time as well, or something like that. Is that's uh, a matter up for debate. Well, does this number mean anything to you with your brass stuff? Knowledge. Does this number mean anything to me with my Bry stuff? Knowledge. Knowledge. <laughs> uh. Does this number mean anything to me with my Bry stuff knowledge? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, make a Bry lore or religion check. Ooh. Uh, could anyone do a religion check? Technically, yeah. Well, give it a try. You all go right ahead. <laughs> I am going to spend one of my uh, hero points. Um, okay. I actually didn't do half bad. I did really good, actually. I'm being modest. Like, that's not a skill right. I'm good at. Are you rolling Brylore or Religion Psych here? Uh, that depends. Would Brylore be that much lower? Because I rolled pretty well. Uh, Bry, I'll say this much. Brylore is a slightly lower DC. If, okay. If I remember correctly, that's a total of 18. Lore checks tend to be about two lower or something like that. Something like that. Uh, and Chester got a 25 Religion. Uh... Yeah, I'll say I'll just let both of you know that um, when you look at it, uh, you see all these clocks at the same thing, and it's it's starting to be like a weird thing, right? And it reminds you of the structure of the book Logic of Design, Bry's Holy Text. It's like you could use the number two point two point seven to look up a regulation. Ah. Oh, because mm -hmm. that, that guy kept quoting numbers for the, the passages. Yeah. Yeah. The tertiary cog. Uh, well, yeah. 
Hey, it's like here. You got your babble on you? Always. Could I see it real quick? I'll give, oh, could, could you look up the passage, <laughs> whatever it is? For the audience, Blob. Audience, Blob. Uh, <laughs> behind me. We mimed. Or uh, I guess I did. And then he responded. I mimed that I was holding a book closer to my chest. <laughs> uh, let us see what this is. Uh, you open up your copy of Logic of Design. Is it an older edition? Because Psykir, Psykir? Yeah, it's not the most up to date, uh, but you see the regulation, the pages for regulation 2.2.6 and regulation 2.2.8. Uh, it looks like 2.2.7 is omitted. <gasps> oh! Oh, that's a clue! Interesting. Passage is missing. Omitted. Even on Psykir's older version. Yep. Well, because remember, this guy got kicked out well like a before few years ago, yeah. Psykir. So. Gotcha. Oh, if we find a if we find a a, a, a bright Bible in here, we might be able to find one that has a, the passage in it. I shall keep my eyes peeled. Uh, Chester's going to step over here. Uh, Chester, as you're um, walking across here, you see a bunch of those scuff marks for the uh, uh, wagon wheels and different things. Uh, Eleanor, honestly, you see it too. Uh, oh, I was going to follow Chester so he doesn't go alone. But some of them look bigger than wagon wheels. Um, would either of you like to make a survival check? Um, do I have? I don't. Does it have to be trained? No. Okay. Then oh, yes. then I'll make a survival oh, check. Does it have to be trained? Plus one. It, would this technically be an investigate activity? Oh. Yeah. Uh, what am I pursue a lead on Kas- Kasawana? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, beautiful swirly purple dye. Four. 16. 18, Yay! Eleanor. I rolled a natty 16. 18. 18. Eleanor and also Psych here, both of you notice. Yeah, I'm going to clue in Psych here so we get up to a 19, <laughs> just in case. You both notice oh, okay. that, I, that uh-huh. um, there are deep parallel gouges on some of these planks that look like they were left by sharp metal tools. Oh. Perhaps thick claws. Oh, like the flying kitty cat. Oh. oh, interesting. These are like slash marks. Yeah. You know what the next thing I want to explore is the explosion spot. Oh yeah, I was making my way that way. Uh, first, checking out the other half-built automatons to make sure you know they ain't gonna come sneaking up on us. It's fair. Um, yeah, I mean, you technically didn't finish exploring the area you were looking at whenever you found the Oh, you're thing. right. Then I would probably make my way back there first. Uh, uh, little spot where I got away before I could look at it. This place pretty good. Are all you over here? Not going to leave Chester alone. But uh, I should note, after going in two rooms of combat, Eleanor is just going to leave her rapier unsheathed and in her hand. That's very fair. Uh, same with the whip, but I figured that. Well, I kind of like to imagine that she's all formal and sheaves it in between when she thinks combat is technically over. There's a way to hold it that shows that you're not willing to uh, fight right now, but that you could very easily start fighting without sheathing it. You're supposed to hold it like a wine glass. Excellent. See, I would depend on you for this sort of fencing lore. Are you trained in fencing lore? (laughs) Yes, Drow is trained (laughs) in fencing lore. Otherwise, you'd be doing your fancy RPG end of the fight in pose. I like to imagine <laughs> that I'm trained da, da, in da, math da, lore. Da, copyright. Copyright. <laughs> uh, make another perception check, uh, whoever's looking through the stuff in this area. All right. Uh, quick question. 10 minutes up or not? Yeah, 10 minutes will be up by this point. Okay. And uh, pursue a lead, apply or not for Kasawana? Uh, yeah. Okay. That's a one for a total of oh, 11. Oh, no. You want to use your hero point? I use my hero point. Don't tell me if I fail or succeed. Never tell me that. Not <laughs> yet. Expend point. Thank you Is for anyone else rolling? that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try. Was it a two? All right, go for it. Was it another one? <laughs> oh, another natty 16. <laughs> it's a two. <laughs> Take for up. a total of 12. And what am I rolling Do again? Do you want to expend uh, another one since we're going to be reset to one anyways? It's perception. 
I'm uh, going. Don't tell me if I succeed no, or fail. No, no, no. Oh, okay. One here, Aww. one at a time. Uh, so what was your total perception? perception? That would be a 24. 24. All right. Jeez. Please uh, let me be good at something other than combat, Jacob. <laughs> so one of the things you notice, it's kind of covered up by some of the like papers and mess made here. Um, but you see this kind of uh, like refracted, like this weird light pattern. Um, and you'll notice as you move stuff away that there's this small device made of bronze gears and small little hammers that look like they're not made of steel, this like darker, hard metal. Um, it almost looks, it's some weird looking device. You're not sure exactly what it does. Uh, and you also find a familiar looking book. Uh, there's a copy of Logic of Design oh. on the table. Hello! Nice. With, okay. With a bookmark in it. We. Eleanor picks it up. Uh, Eleanor, you pick up this book. Um, it has a bookmark in it. Uh, if you open it up, yes. it's nestled between regulation 2.2.6 <gasps> and 2.2.8. And what's 2.2.7 say? It happens to be omitted. No! Oh. Ah! And uh, what was the other item that, we, that they found there? This small device that's like... Uh, made of bronze gears and small little hammers uh, that don't look like it's steel. It's some sort of darker metal. Um, and this large hexagonal crystal in the center. Um, you'd have to have some sort of check to figure out what it is. Like I a think. crafting check? Uh, that might be one of the things. It's like Eleanor just kind of like proud of herself. Al would say to check for all possible things to find. That's right. Uh, what can I roll? Crafting would probably be my best one. But Underneath the trash. I also have academia <laughs> lore. Won't look. Uh, I'll let you roll crafting or invention lore to determine what he this is. He would run around in the trash. Okay. And uh, <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> While we're here for most investigate checks, I'm just going to take that plus one bonus. Yeah, honestly. Okay. Hey, that plus one bonus you give us, is that a follow the expert thing? No, that is my, it's my reaction. A lot of people get reactions for combat stuff. I have a reaction for exploring. Yeah. My reaction is clue in. I give you my pursue a lead bonus for investigation. Okay, just asking because I have something that pertains to following an expert. That's a much better roll. That is a total of 31. 17 on the die plus 14. This weird thing, so it's bronze gears and little adamantine hammers. Oh. And the around this big, like, quartz crystal. Uh, it's like a really uh, weird, like, well, not weird, it's like a really impressive quartz crystal, and you know it's a clock. You don't see any way to wind the clock, um, and as you figure it out, uh, the, the so the quartz crystal is like roughly like forearm sized. It's hexagonal. Also, it's big. It's pretty big. It looks like it was kind of covered up um, in the mess here. Uh, these hammers are like mounted over these chime where they can hit these chimes on the top of the device. Um, there's a metal cylinder with a series of bumps on the surface. It's just this weird, intricate little clock, but there's no way to wind it. Um, it has a bronze clock face with tiny crystals indicating the ordinals. Um, and it has 13 instead of the normal 12. Huh. Um, the time on the clock looks like it's progressing in real time. It looks like it's keeping time normally. Um, whenever you mess with it, uh, it like you're trying to figure out like how it works or whatever because you don't see a way to like wind the clock and it starts, the middle cylinders start to rotate and the hammers strike the chimes in this like pattern. Um, and you notice it because you have it happen to you like several times. Uh, two chimes, two chimes, seven chimes. Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. And how often two, does it two, do seven. this? Uh, it'll do it like uh, up to like a couple times a minute if you mess with it. We really need to find an old version of the Bree Bible. Well, I will remind you in your Bri. research at the library, you were able to make a like change log copy. Oh yeah. Well, thank you for the reminder because we had forgotten. Can we pull that out? Uh, do you have all your research from the library on your on on hand right now? Uh, Maybe in the bag. Would we keep that in the bag, or would we just keep let's, it in the let's place? Let's go back to. We probably keep yeah. it in the place. 
All right. Yeah. All right, Are we going to leave here? Up in, um, that's probably up in Chester's like vision board. board. Yeah. Because you copied every single thing that changed in that version, so it's not going to be like a list. It's going to be like a bunch of pages of yeah. like regulations. Mm-hmm. I have yelled at us in my notes for this episode. But first... Um, Wait, we're going to leave? No, we'll leave when we're done. Okay, I was going to say, let's not leave until we're done. Um, so if we're done searching this area, Chester's going to then go over here. Oh, I mean, I suppose let's be proper. He'll check <laughs> down here. Yeah, uh, you look down here. Um, there's less stuff. There's only like one clockwork torso, uh, no head attached, not even a winding key. There's some like tooling to make gears over here and there's a pile of gears on a table uh, but there's no uh, nothing of interest. And I don't see anything alchemical while I'm looking through all this stuff, do I? No. Okay. Uh, move up here. Uh, and I will also note, so you came in one door on the east side here that I think is still open. Yes. You see there are two other Like doors. office style doors, right? Correct. We should check those out. We will. Now are you all hanging out together? I, I am a so. stick near Chester. Okay. Yeah, Chester, over here you see uh, two uh, looks like run-down clockwork machines. And you also see this, like, big pile of sandbags uh-huh. uh, in that, like, pockmarked area over there. Uh, why don't I read you some flavor for that? Oh, explosion! By the by, I keep saying over here. Chester has slowly moved more and more north by because there's different workstations in this room. The big warehouse. Is, there's four workstations. He's moved up to the third one, the second one from the top. Uh, He's working systematically as Chester would. That's right. Well, I'll read you the flavor text for this little area. Williams. Uh, this <laughs> this area seems to be the site of an explosion. The walls are lined with sandbags, most of which are torn open as if by a thousand cuts, the frayed edges of the linen scorched. The center of the floor is burned like a black starburst, soot and debris Mm, radiating from an ashen center. A makeshift bunker of sandbags lies just around the corner from the blast site. The faint stench of brimstone and black powder lingers in the air. Oh, wow. Still. I thought the exact same thing, Drow. Black Starburst flavor. Wait, if there are sandbags, like, lining the walls... Then this was an an intentional explosion. Yeah, this wasn't like... It it might not have been just some kind of self-defense explosion. This could be his test area for Pyronite if he's working on it. Doesn't mean it was a defense wall. Also, I want to, like, kick around a sandbag or two, make sure there's nothing hidden. Uh, yeah, you don't see anything hidden um, in the sandbags, I'll say. Uh, but as you're looking around, you see, like, there's a lot of, like, soot, and some of it looks like it's disturbed. Make me another survival check. Will do. Maybe I'll roll good. Natty 19. Ooh, baby. And I have no survival, so that's 19. Uh, you figure out that there has been some humanoid size, like, medium... Uh, humanoid-sized footprints, uh, three of them to be specific, and one small-sized humanoid. With bare fucking feet. (laughs) uh, That have tracked through here somewhat recently. Interesting. Chester will, uh, he'll hear this get pointed out and he'll be like, (laughs) Muglin. Do you think that we could find out any previous recordings from the little thing shoved in the bag? Or is it fully busted. I don't know. I, whenever we get back, I'm going to try and see what I can do. I might, I'm more alchemical in nature with my stuff, but Mama had people on the farm that did stuff with inventions and whatnot, and I took a class or two at the academy, so I might be able to figure out something. I'm a, I'm a smart cookie. My apologies. I might have panicked and Listen, it, run it straight through. Number one goal was to not let them know anything about us. Gold, gold succeeded. Everything else is secondary. Impeccable shot, Psykeer. I'm glad that I didn't shoot Chester. Seconded. Um, <laughs> before right. Chester goes over to the explosion area, he is going to check out... Oh, no, he's going to check out... Do I need to do any rolls here? Uh, no. Okay, what about over here? Uh, I mean, no, you don't need to do any rolls. Uh, it's just... Um, yeah, whenever you're going over into this um, area, you're looking around. It's the same deal you've seen before. Uh-huh. Uh 
There's two different clockwork. Uh, looks like kind of similar to the door guardian before. Um, Psyche here, as you're in here, uh, you see a lot of like familiar looking parts. Um, it makes sense that like the guy that you get a lot of your modifications from would use stuff like this. Cause it looks like this guy not only just worked on a wholly assembled clockwork machines, but also like sold parts and whatnot or fixed mm-hmm. up things. Psyche is going to look around, um, just kind of idly perusing the things and then they're gonna reach up, sort of unscrew one of their lower fangs, pick something up off of a shelf, screw that in <laughs> instead. Picks a better looking one. Oh, it's sharper. Uh, but more importantly, Chester, whenever you walk over here, uh, you go look at one of them and this one's like a little bit more assembled and you're poking around at it, it's all like slumped over. Uh-huh. And then suddenly it stands up. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And it Ch- goes to uh-huh. grab at you. Uh-huh. And that's where we're going to pick up in our next yeah, episode. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Okay. <gasps> Boom. <laughs> Waiting for that, weren't you? Yeah, I sure was. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Third Gallon Podcast. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing us. If you want to see more from us, check out our website, thirdgallon.com, or follow us on Twitter. We are at thirdgallon, that's T-H-I-R-D gallon. You can also tweet at us using the hashtag thirdgallon, and we are on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook with the same handle, at thirdgallon. We also publish a video version of the podcast on YouTube, which you can find on our channel, The Third Gallon. Our theme for this season is Delta Rust, composed by Andy Ellison. Our ambience for this episode was composed by Michael Gelfi, and you can find more of his work on his YouTube channel, Michael Gelfi Studios. And you can support his awesome work at patreon.com slash Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.